The Pentagon has produced a self-serving document that is unfortunately helping to lower the bar. It was only two months ago when retired U.S. Army General and the former Supreme Allied Commander of Europe for NATO, Wesley Clark, advocated rounding up radicalized and disloyal Americans and putting them in internment camps for the duration of the war on terror. I do think on a national policy level, we need to look at, um, at what self-radicalization means because we are at war with um, uh, this group of terrorists. They do have an ideology. In World War II, if uh, someone supported Nazi Germany at the expense of the United States, well, we didn't say that was freedom of speech. Uh, we, we put him in a, in a camp. We, they were prisoners of war. Well, the difference is that World War II was a war declared under Article 1, Section 8, Clause 2 of the Constitution, whereas the war on terror is undeclared and thus illegal. Clark is in essence advocating a life sentence for people who have not committed a crime but merely engaged in speech, often reprehensible yet constitutionally protected. The government considers radical and in opposition to its foreign policy. The Edward Snowden leaks reveal that the war on terror at home continues to grind on, capturing in its dragnet millions of Americans and foreigners, many of them innocent of any crime. The war on terror has become institutionalized, and the domestic costs of this war continue to mount. Privacy is being eroded, communications are being monitored, and dissent is being cracked down on. And there's no end in sight to this domestic juggernaut, writes Alex Kane. Clark's remarks reveal the mindset of the upper echelon of government. Mass internment of official enemies on par with Nazi Germany and Stalin's Soviet Union is now on the table. Do we really have to remind the ignoramus stuffed shirts over at the military industrial complex of the First Amendment? The First Amendment to the United States Constitution where it prohibits abridging the freedom of speech and infringing on the freedom of the press. Is this where we are headed when it comes to free speech? Hillary Clinton recently compared the Republican Party to terrorists. You have to ask yourself, if Hillary's campaign had been a shining success rather than a dismal criminal failure, would the Republican Party have been rounded up and sent to Gitmo? And is our Shanghai government only a clock tick away from declaring war on its own people? Or is this just an indication that they already have? John Bound for Infowars.com And all you ISIS people threatening us, hey, we're not a French newspaper, okay? We got people that have taken your asses out in this building right now. We're armed to the teeth, and we're not scared. You got that, you sons of bitches? This is Texas. You want to threaten me, you can go straight to hell. You understand that? Never water yourself down just because someone can't handle you at 100 proof. It's the Alex Jones Show, because there's a war on for your mind. Brain force is here. Ladies and gentlemen, I've been on this the last few months. You probably noticed I've been more crazed, more focused, less brain fog, more energy, more special reports, and it's because of brain force. We kept changing this formula over and over and over again until it became sort of a grand puzzle. For example, the L-theanine inside of it, that is activated by the different compounds in the yerba mate that we put inside of it as well. This just increases the compounds you already have. This is what you're actually designed to run on. Exactly. It's kind of like a car will run on one form of junkie gas, but it runs really good on what it's designed for. And that's the principle of InfoWars life, as far as I understand, that you've always had, is that it's not about synthetic chemicals and forcing actions. It's about letting your body do its own thing and giving your body the tools it needs to create these different compounds that are super valuable and super beneficial. You will find Brain Force and other game-changing products at InfoWarsLife.com or call 888 Two five three three one three nine. I wanted to bring Weldon Henson in here briefly because we have a great sponsor. Boy, I've sure been enjoying the firearms that I've gotten from him. HDFirearms.com. That's Head Down Firearms. They have super high quality 223s, 308, you name it. It's called 556, technically, in the 223, that are guns that would be $3,000 or $1,500. Guns that would be $1,500 or $900. Well, the important thing to remember is that if you're not in the market to buy a brand new rifle. You have an AR-15, you have an AR-10 platform 308 rifle. They've got everything you need to upgrade it. Buy a new part, buy a new trigger, buy a new muzzle brake, buy a new handrail. It's all an upgrade for your rifle because these are all superior top of the line quality products made in America. 
Tell folks uh, about their low profile series. Well, this is an important thing to have. This is untraceable. You, anybody can get this kit right here. You don't have to go through a, a federal firearms license place. Uh, you can have it shipped right to your house. This is what the traders have been trying to shut down. Absolutely. So you basically have everything you need besides a lower receiver because that's what's traceable. That's what's serialized and that's what the, the federal government's after. But uh, you can get this right here. Get your own lower receiver any way you want. There's different programs. All you got to do is your own research and you can find out how to get a lower receiver so that you can put it on this. Maybe you already have a lower receiver from an AR from way back that you just don't quite use anymore. It's old, something like that. You can throw it on this. You basically have a brand new rifle and you saved money by putting it together yourself and buying this kit right here, which is cheaper than the actual rifle. And they've got the highest quality barrels, the highest quality triggers. We're not just saying that. Go look at the third party reviews. Tell them about the new rifle they're producing that's getting amazing reviews. And then I just got one, this 308. Yes, that is very... Arcadius. Arcadius, that's very exciting. They just came out with their own line of um, AR-10 platforms, which is basically an AR-15, but instead of it being a 5.56, it shoots a 308 round, which I know you personally like shooting a 308. Uh, I like them both. I mean, just to be clear, they've always for years been making this for the big manufacturers, the high end. They're just absolutely. now not private labeling. They're putting out their own guns. Yes. Well, the one they sent you, I'm actually jealous of, is a beautiful gun. Um, it's set up and configured for long-range shooting, marksmanship type things. Just the scope alone is something to <laughs> snuggle with. It, yeah, it's a Vortex 4x16 scope, which you can get a head down as well, their distributor. Um, and and I think things for people to remember is that if you want a 308, you don't have to get the 18-inch barrel. You don't have to get the 22-inch barrel. You don't have to get it set up for marksmanship. You can get one with a 16-inch barrel that's set up for more of an assault weapon type, you know, uh, uh, configuration. So anything you want, people just call head down. You can get anything you want made there. And any configuration you might want on your rifle, they're, they're able to do that. And they have 100% perfect customer service ratings there. Bottom line, it's not just firearms, a ton of accessories, very affordable, and it supports the info war. If you're not shopping at hdfirearms.com, you're not helping the info war. I mean, this is a win-win. Thank you all for your support. Check them out today. Thank you, Weldon. Welcome back. Joining me in studio now is Rob Dew to break down this global immigration crisis and what's behind it. Now, the Daily Mail is reporting how thousands of people have breached Europe's wall of wire. I mean, we could have told them that that wasn't going to going to work. But I mean, can you blame these people for trying to escape the conditions they're in? Or, or I mean, obviously, what's what's driving this? Well, what's driving it is one thing. But you know, they don't even have a ladder to go over this wall. They're going underneath the barbed wire. And there's some dramatic photos in there in that Daily Mail article showing uh, families crawling under it, little kids getting caught with their hair uh, in the barbed wire. I mean, it really is. Yeah, and, and they're playing it up as, look at these poor immigrants. We really have to come out and help them. Uh, there's some of the shots right there. And they're, they're taking, it's interesting, at the bottom of this article, it shows the route they're taking from Africa coming in through Eastern Europe and then into Western Europe. And it's mainly because they're coming in because of the promise of welfare, help, and jobs. Now, I, uh, when I was in Rome, I talked to a street vendor who was selling uh, some jewelry. And he was from Bangladesh. In fact, I've got a photo of it we'll put up right here of him. He didn't want me to take a photo of his face, but he was showing me some necklaces. And um, I said, you know, where are you from? He goes, Bangladesh. And I said, well, what made you want to come to Rome? He goes, well, I've got a kid coming next year, early next year. I'm going to be a father. And he goes, there's too many people in Bangladesh and not enough jobs. Mm -hmm. So he goes, at least in Rome, he goes, there's a lot of people here, but there's jobs if you want them. And so he was out there working. He, wor he was working with another guy and they were, they were, you know, selling their wares and whatnot. But that's why people are coming. They think there's jobs in Europe that there's no jobs anywhere else, I guess, where they're coming from. And then you also have the aspect that in Libya, in Syria, these are all areas that we helped bomb and destroy in the last mm -hmm. few years. There's total chaos in these areas. ISIS is stealing, kidnapping exactly. women and children. So people feel like they have nothing else to do. So they're making this trek with their kids. They're, they're fleeing for their lives with their possessions on their back. This is dramatic stuff. They're crawling into boats. I mean, there's another Daily Mail article, Horror of the Migrant Boat tra Tragedy, yeah. where they're just finding boatloads of migrants. They're just piling into these things. Or 70 found dead in a truck after yeah, suffocation. That was in Austria. At first they thought it was 50, and then they opened up the back of the truck and finally counted the bodies. There was there was uh, 59 men, uh, a few women, and, and then one children. one children, uh, one child uh, they found dead in there. And they just uh, arrested a Bulgarian who was uh, transporting these people. And that's the thing. The coyotes, what is what we call them here, 
they're transporting these people. They treat them like garbage. Mm -hmm. They beat them. They steal from them. Uh, and they're basically at the mercy of it because right. they're not in their homeland. They have no idea where to go. Yeah, pay us go. and we'll get you there safely. And then here they end up, you know, drowning or suffocating. And Right. And so Europe is going, well, we got to do something. We got to take them in. So they're taking them in. And then you have what, what Paul Watson wrote about yesterday. Uh, this is an article that was up on InfoWars. France prepares for mass unrest, radicalized immigrants taking over cities. And what's happening is these people are coming in. These are several generations now. These are the kids, uh, probably the great grandkids of the people who originally went there. But now these kids are growing up. They know they're not really Europeans. They don't see themselves as Europeans. They see themselves as either Muslim or, or, or something else, wherever, wherever they're from. And they're basically, you know, beating the crap out of cops. And cops don't want to go in this area. Tourists aren't going in these areas. People are, are staying away from them. And now they're coming up with a plan to bring the army in to actually go into these neighborhoods and take control. And so that's what you get after a while. Because when you don't bring people in and say, hey, if you're going to come in this country, this is how we expect you to act. If you want to live here, we expect you to act like a Spaniard or an Italian yeah, or an, Eng laws. an English. It's not Sharia law. Right. right. And, and, and we don't do that in our country. Mm -hmm. We don't bring in people and say, look, if you're going to come in this country, here, here's the path to citizenship. This is what it is. You have to go through these steps. None of that ever happens. It's like, oh, we're going to take you. We're going to take all your customs, whatever you want. We lay out the red carpet for them. We give them benefits. Mm -hmm. And this is here. It happens in Europe. It happens in Canada. And then you get these problems later on where now they feel entitled mm -hmm. to everything to be given to them. Right. And, and that's where the problem comes. And feel victimized when they're not uh, when they're not accepted into the society when they're not really assimilating into whatever the the culture is like in the country that they're now. Right. Going to. Norway's having big problems. Mm -hmm. uh, Sweden's having problems. N Norway, they actually are trying to take former ISIS fighters and actually re-educate them and, and, and to, to get them back into society. Yeah, the old State Department, give them jobs, and maybe they won't blow people up. And, th and that's what you get when you get a, a socialist utopia that you have up in Scandinavia. You know, they've tried for that, but now they're allowing in hordes of immigrants who don't want to... to hold on to those Norwegian values. But so what is behind this? I mean, we see what's happening here in the United States. It's the whole Cloward and Piven strategy of flooding the country with people who are going to, you know, be on welfare so that the only way to save everything is to make the state bigger, get everyone, you know, needing Cre the government. Right, create more welfare, uh, bring in people to teach them that guns are bad. And so then we, you can create a voting block that will then go after people's guns that will keep people like Hillary Clinton in office. Right. And, you know, if, just a little side note here. People are all worried about Hillary Clinton, you know, bolting out of the election. She's not going to withdraw. She's already got one-fifth of the delegates already pledged to her. Right. So it's a long hill for anybody else. Uh, Joe Biden, Bernie Sanders, no, they don't have a chance, really. She's not going to relinquish the power. <laughs> and, and she's the kind of person they want in there because, you know, she's forward-thinking. That means more immigrants coming in right. and not being, you know, assimilated to the way of life here in America, which is, it's different than, you know, Africa or some parts of Mexico. I mean, a lot of Mexicans, I think, when they come here, they know what to do. They're yeah. hardworking. I see them working all the time around Austin. Mm -hmm. I mean, and I don't know if they're illegal or illegal, um, but I know some are. You go to you go to the uh, Home Depots and you can see them hanging out looking for a job. And those guys, I guarantee you, are not legal. And that's why they go there to get picked up to work on some of these crews. But they're also trying to provide for their families. So I can't really fault people for doing that right. at all. Uh, the conditions they're I can't fault like any of these, these people. people. They're yeah. escaping war and tragedy and death and ISIS and they have to go somewhere. But you know, this all goes back in Europe. This goes back to uh, something. Uh, when I met uh, Leo Zagami, who's a researcher of the Vatican, we did a long interview with him, and, and he, he kept talking about the Kalergi plan, the Kalergi plan. And he's like, have you ever heard of the Kalergi plan? I'm like, no, I never heard of it. And, and a couple days ago, or actually today, we posted his article about the Kalergi plan, which happened to just coincide really well with everything that was going on. This is a man, his name is Richard Kalergi. He died in 1972. In 1922, he co-founded the Pan-European Union, and he was all about, uh, I guess, watering down Europe, is, is what he said. And in his, uh, he writes, actually, uh, in 1925, he wrote a book called Practical Idealism, and he wrote, the man of the future will be of mixed race. Today's races and classes will gradually disappear, owning to the vanishing space, time, and prejudice. The Eurasian Negroid race of the future, similar in its appearance to ancient Egyptians, 
will replace the diversity of peoples with the diversity of individuals.